This is a solution to In Class Work 12, and I'm focusing in this first segment on Part A. In Part A, we are looking at this iron Fe3C phase diagram, and we are um, working at sketching a possible microstructure. So we, this is our goal. We're going to end up with a microstructure, and we're going to draw stuff inside there that tells us what we see. So let's orient ourselves. This is a phase diagram. We've been told it's the iron Fe3C phase diagram. And we see iron over here at zero weight percent carbon. And we're seeing numbers one, two, and from our memory, we remember what the rest of this sort of looks like. It ends up over here corresponding to Fe3C, which is cementite. And that corresponds to 6.7 weight percent carbon. All right, and so um, over here, this pure iron phase um, is, uh, is called ferrite. That's the BCC phase of iron. It's the, the low temperature phase of iron. And we notice this phase diagram ends at 400 degrees C, and we've been asked to do something at room temperature. So we, we just have to extrapolate that 400 is as close as we're going to get, and so we're going we're gonna to answer this problem at 400 degrees C. So at 400 degrees C, because, because this area over here is, is ferrite, and this, this area over here is cementite, what we have at room temperature is alpha plus Fe3C. So our answer is going to only involve alpha and Fe3C, because that's the only thing we can have for in, if, it's, if things are in equilibrium at room temperature for, um, for anywhere on this phase diagram. Now, um, so let's... Let's kind of unpack this word eutectoid, because that's a really critical part of the problem. Understanding the word eutectoid is very important. The word eutectoid means simply this. It means that you have a composition of exactly that low point there. In other words, the composition of this steel is 0.76 weight percent carbon. That's what the word eutectoid means. And further, it's, it's pointing out that there's a particular reaction going on there, which is our eutectoid reaction. The eutectoid reaction involves a solid phase, in this case gamma, which, by the way, is called austenite. And it's the FCC um, phase of iron. It only occurs at higher temperatures. So austenite is going to turn into two other solid phases as it cools down. This composition will, will turn into these two other phases as it cools down below this particular temperature of 727C. So that's the eutectoid reaction. And it only occurs to a steel with the eutectic composition. So since we have a eutectoid steel, meaning it has a composition, that's basically what's happening. All of our gamma is going through this low point here at 727, and then very, very quickly it's forming ferrite over on this side and cementite over on that side. All right, because of the way in which it forms, um, uh, in other words, it forms rapidly, it doesn't have very much time, it ends up forming a very special microstructure called perlite. And I'm going to write that um, up here so you see the word perlite. So perlite is a mixture of alpha and Fe3C that forms from, um, from uh, austenite that has a composition of 0.76 weight percent carbon. So let's just take ourselves back to this point right here. Let's imagine we're at about, I don't know, 825C. Everything's, everything's, um, everything's austenite. And what does our microstructure look like? Well, it's going to look like large equiaxed grains, something like that. I just drew four, four different grains. This was 100% um, austenite. As we cool this thing down, so I'm going to um, highlight kind of what I'm doing in my head. As we cool down and transition below 727, as I said before, it's going to form ferrite and Fe3C. And it doesn't have much time to do that in. And so what that means in terms of what we're drawing is that ferrite and cementite are going to nucleate off of these grain boundaries and start growing like crazy very, very quickly. And they're, they they grow in little plates because a lot of diffusion has to occur across this material. And not, you know, in other words, carbon, it has to make a phase that has 25 atomic percent carbon, and it has to make a phase that has almost no carbon. 
So you end up with this very fine microstructure that we call perlite. So let's imagine this green line corresponds to Fe3C. And let's make everything else in this phase diagram um, be alpha. So yellow um, is alpha. Yellow, here's where we're done. In part B of this problem, we're asking, we're being asked what alloy composition um, will yield the following microstructure. And I'm going to draw it because I'm, I'm a kind of visual person. So we've been told it's a quarter pro-eutectoid ferrite. All right. And all that means is that it's, it's ferrite that formed somewhere in this part of the curve. So our composition corresponds to somewhere between here and here. That's what this pro-eutectoid ferrite means. So it's occurring above 727 degrees C. Anyway, a quarter of it, so let's just draw kind of some, some I'm trying to draw approximately a quarter, you know, 25% of this is our, our pro-eutectoid ferrite, and the rest of it is perlite. So that's got that fine microstructure that we saw before. All right, remember that perlite is a mixture of alpha and Fe3C that forms from gamma that has the eutectoid composition of 0.76 weight percent carbon. All right, so we've oriented ourselves and, and um, to continue to solve this problem, what I'm gonna do is, is, um, is expand this a little bit so we can see it better and kind of clean it up. All right. So um, again, a quarter of our material is this um, pro-eutectoid um, ferrite. A quarter of it is that. And so it's going to be pretty useful for us to have a line segment length or, or to draw um, a tie line that goes from um, all the way on over there to all the way over, over there. And I'm, I'm mentally imagining myself just above this eutectoid transition. And then to divide this into four segments. Why four segments? Because we know a quarter of it is alpha. And then again, this is the region over here where alpha gets to form. Okay, so that means that we would use this line segment length divided by the total. Um, so a quarter is equal to uh, the small line segment length that I drew divided by the total. That's what the lever rule tells us. We can um, solve this exactly by writing the following equation. We know this composition is 0.76, so 0.76 minus this composition we're trying to figure out divided by the total line segment length, which is going to be 0.76 minus 0.022. is going to equal a quarter. And then when we solve for x0 from that equation, uh, we get um, a composition of 0.58 weight percent carbon. And that's our answer. So our overall alloy composition is 0.58. And so what happens is a quarter of it forms this um, pro-eutectoid um, uh, ferrite. And then the rest of it, right, ends up with exactly this right composition to go through the perlite transition. And so that the rest of it will be gamma, that after it cools down, down it's going to form um, that perlite mixture. And so that is the solution to this problem. All right, this is part C. And uh, I actually already solved part C at the very beginning of part B. So go back. In part D of in-class work, are, are starting with a microstructure, and we're looking at it right now, that has, and it's telling us, we can see that here, and the other thing it has is that the rest of it is 90% pearl, the fine little lamellae that are, um, are present all over this micrograph. And it's actually asking us what um, composition and temperature, or in other words, what state point, uh, what, what kind of alloy would make this. So I'm going to slide down. So we can see the equilibrium phase diagram, and we're remembering that it has 10% cementite. All right, so we've got to remember, uh, this is where vocabulary is important, that cementite is occurring over here on at, the, at this composition. 
And so um, we're seeing cementite and then we're also seeing some perlite and we know that perlite can only come from gamma that has that composition. So these are our clues. Now, if it has cementite in it as, as pro-eutectoid cementite, which it does, we, you know, because it's, it, 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 that's part of the problem statement, that means the cementite that forms first, um, what that means is, is that cementite would have needed to form with a, with a, for a steel and a, with an alloy composition somewhere in this range. So our answer is going to lie in this range because um, as austenite cools down into this region, it's going to form that proeutectoid cementite. And so to fit to, in order to figure out exactly what composition, we're going to want to draw a tie line j just above the temperature of 727. And we're going to mentally kind of be dividing this into 10 line segment lengths because what a terrible job at this. So if that's halfway, that would be about, um, oh gosh, so I'm just hacking this up here, but I'm, I'm trying to draw 10th line segments. Just kind of one, two, three, four. That's, that's not very good, but that gives us a general idea. And so, once again, we would apply the lever rule, and we are going to apply the lever rule in order to um, um, help us know approximately what composition would yield one tenth pro eutectoid cementite. So, I'm um, this line segment length that I have just outlined divided by the total line segment length would be one tenth. Um, this again is the is the cementite phase, so we choose the line segment length that does not touch that phase, divided by the total line segment length. And so once again, we can write an equation to kind of solve for this exactly. And and it looks like to me like it's going to be about 1.4, 1.5 in that neighborhood. So we'll, if we get that answer, we'll we'll know we're right. But to be more exact, what I am saying is that our unknown alloy composition X zero minus 0.76, which is that number right there, 0.76, divided by this number all the way over here, 6.7 minus 0.76 will equal 0.1. And so you're going to want to go ahead and solve to get your equilibrium alloy composition. After we solve for x in this equation, we get an x value that's equal to 1.35 weight percent carbon. And that looks pretty good. That was about kind of what I guessed it would be uh, originally. All right, let's just scroll back and see if we solved the problem. They wanted us to choose a So that, that's actually a good point. So our alloy. Um, winds up being at precisely this composition, kind of coming on down here like this. It forms all that pro-eutectoid cementite. What's left over is gamma that has this excellent composition of 0.76, and so that material, as it continues to cool, is going to form perlite. And so because there's perlite present in the problem statement, we know that we are below 727. And so why don't we just say, um, I don't know, we could say 400 degrees C, or we could go ahead and say we're at room temperature, and our alloy overall alloy composition, X0, is equal to 1.354 weight percent carbon, and we're done.